Hello, this is Mark Tucker with the final video in the series on APL components for viewers of the Dabble Lab channel. In this video, we'll learn about responsive components and responsive templates. The document links are in the description. Here we go. So in this series, we learned about the 12 built-in components as well as resources, styles, states, data binding, events, gestures, and commands. And in the APL doc developer documentation, you can find that under APL reference, APL for share for screen devices here. And you can see where we you know, talked about you know, documents and resources, the different data types, styles, um, different components, um, and their different uh, properties and events and uh, the commands and gestures. So we learned all about that in that section. And these are the basic building blocks of all APL documents and, and other components that you create. Uh, today, we're going to um, go over this section that is uh, use pre-built templates and components, the Alexa design system. And we're going to look at specifically um, responsive components and responsive templates. Now, there are 22 responsive components, and uh, they include things like uh, you know, buttons, checkboxes, um, radio buttons, uh, a radiance control, a toggle switch, things that you would uh, find in, in a lot of different uh, UIs that you create. And you see things that are a little bit more complicated, which um, are things like Alexa headers, or footers. So what is a responsive component? Now, a re, the word responsive is used because extra care has been uh, spent in these uh, components and also in the templates to make them so that they work well to, regardless of which uh, screen size or you know, device uh, viewport that you're using, whether you're using a hub or a, you know, you know, a tablet or at Echo Show, you know, Spot, or F Echo Show 5, Echo Show 10, Echo Show you know, 15, or a TV. Um, so th that's why it's called responsive. Um, I created a document here, and I like to call responsive components composite components because they're really just built with the built-in components that we've already learned about. So the Alexa button, you can imagine, because there's you know, text and some sort of a frame border, and the fact that you can tap on it, then you would need to have a text component that is wrapped by a frame component, which is wrapped by a touch wrapper. And you can create your own button and you know, add some properties and some styles, and you're good to go. Similarly, with the Alexa checkbox, Alexa radio button, and the switch, Vector graphic already has the ability to uh, touch built into a vector graphic, and you can imagine just uh, switching out which uh, you know, vector graphic you're going to show based on whether the state is checked or, or you know, checked as true or false. Uh, similar to the Alexa button, there's the Alexa icon button. You could see that very similar, that it would be a touch wrapper, a frame uh, to give, give you this border here and a vector graphic. Um, or in the case where this isn't touchable, um, but is used in numbering lists, you could see an Alexa ordinal very easily could be made with a frame and um, a text component. So those are um, you know, some different examples of, of some of the more simple ones. And, you know, and then you can just get increasingly more complex. Um, Alexa rating could be an image that represents a complete um, score, a half score, or no score. You can use whatever shape you want, and that could be an image or a vector graphic and then some text off to the side. There's other uh, responsive components that you know, you'll see uh, fairly uh, common is, for example, the Alexa header. If you wanted to have a standard header at the top of every screen, you can see that it's a frame component because you can change the color of the header. Um, some text, a text component for the title and the subtitle. This section over here would be touchable with a vector graphic for a back, um, like a back button. And this attribution over here could be a text or image. Um, so you could see how you could use basic uh, components and 
something like a container component to to lay out um, this so that you could create your own um, Alexa header if you wanted. An Alexa footer, uh, just a container and some text. Uh, also Alexa page uh, counter that would be used with the, uh, the Alexa um, you know, pager co uh, component. Uh, just some you know, text saying that you're on page one of five. This Alexa slider would be a little bit more complicated, but you could still see uh, you know, things laid out in a container here in one row where you've got a vector graphic, another vector graphic, either a frame or a vector graphic for this thumb, and then three different frame um, components to make up these um, different uh, uh, lines or band here um, for that. So that um, that really you know, covers the you know some of the highlights of what a responsive component is and kind of how to think about that. That you know it's really just you know, built up of, of some of the things that we've already learned. Um, in addition, um, in the last video, we talked about uh, events and commands. And there is a, a page here that was talked about different responsive components and the events that, uh, that they have. There's a list of, of uh, responsive components that don't have any events at all. But you can see a lot of them have, um, like the button and the checkbox, icon button, et cetera, have uh, a primary action. So this event happens when, like, you click on the button or you click on the checkbox. And think of it as, as you know, similar to an on-press event. But if you add commands to the primary action event, then when you click on the button, then you can make something happen. Um, you know, there's just, depending on which of the different components, there's different events. Uh, most of them are fairly simple, like the header um, gives you a header back button command. That's for when you click on that back button on the header. The Alexa transport control would be something that would be used with the video component and allows you to do play, pause, and some action when, when that happens. And define um, a secondary smaller control button on the left and on the right. Um, that could go to the previous track or the next track or go back 15 seconds or forward 30 seconds, um, whatever, on that. So that is um, kind of a, a quick overview of responsive components. And then if we look at the seven different responsive templates we have, detail, grid list, image list, paginated list, text list, lists, and head, um, headline, then let's, um, let's take a look at what those look like. So here, here they are, but once again, these responsive templates um, are just built using um, existing built-in components and some of the responsive uh, components. The difference with a responsive template is that it's meant to be a whole solution. You can uh, use one of these templates and define different values and it will create a complete screen for you. And like, again, responsive, um, there's work that's gone into making these so that they work for all the different uh, viewport device sizes that are, um, that are out there. But if we look, we can see at the top here, there's a header, an Alexa header, an Alexa header. Uh, same here, Alexa header, here's an Alexa footer. So in this case, it's using a responsive component for those pieces. Uh, we have uh, probably all of these use Alexa background. Um, which is another responsive component, a, an image, a text component, some, some built-in components, uh, Alexa buttons, which are responsive components. So these screens are just you know, composite of uh, a lot of the components that we already know about. Um, in the case of an Alexa grid list, you can see that it's using something similar to a grid sequence. And in the video, when we, when we did grid, um, grid sequence and, and sequence components, then you can see that we did something very similar. We, we laid this out in a way that you could have a, you know, a grid of items that, that were to scroll, um, and then, uh, you, or you could make it scroll you know, a different direction with, uh, with the same format, um, or a kind of a, a vertical scroll with a, a wider format so there was more room for, for text. So those are all things that we've, we've kind of uh, used, um, and you can see how a sequence component's been used with other components to create that. Same thing with there, just some text. 
a pager component uh, with the, the page counter down here at the bottom. And in order to use these, uh, you know, these components and, and, and these templates, you just need to import the Alexa layouts and that's where all of these things are defined. Um, so you can tell, like if you don't import anything, you can use just the built-in components, but if you wanted to use these additional Alexa responsive components and responsive templates, then you would import Alexa layouts. Now, Alexa lists is interesting. It's a component that's kind of like a chameleon, depending on uh, how it's used, then it could render as an Alexa image list or an Alexa text list, or if it was using um, like the smaller, the echo spot, the round, um, size, then it would change into a paginated list. So you could use these you know, components uh, or these templates by themselves if you wanted to, or you could use them in, uh, in just with the Alexa list and it would kind of figure that out for you. If we go back into the Alexa events um, and look at responsive templates, you'll see here are the seven different templates, and they pretty much are ha all have some of the same things. So they all have a header back button command. So if you wanted to do something when you clicked on the back button of the header, uh, like on the detail, remember we had those two uh, those two buttons here. Um, so now we've got events that would um, handle uh, whether you did button one primary action, button two primary action. Once again, these are arrays that you can define one or more command um, here and, and uh, you can have it do uh, whatever it, uh, it needs to do. Um, and uh, some of these have you know, primary actions, like if it's, a, if it's one of the lists, when you click on something in the list, then primary action gets called and you get the access to the information that's related to the, um, the item that you, you uh, tapped or selected. So that's that, and uh, so that's where um, where you go next. Um, in this video, um, we learned about the difference between responsive components and responsive templates, and we also learned how they are composed of built-in components and responsive components. So if, um, if you go into a, a basic document, there's this import section, and in this case, um, in, to get access to any of these responsive templates or components, you need to import Alexa layouts. But really what happens behind the scenes is that this Alexa layouts is really just an APL document similar to what an APL document looks like with here that we've been using. But it uses this layout section and here it defines, you know, like in here it would be Alexa button um, and, and you would define you know, the different things that would go into the Alexa button and you can define you know, parameters that could get set. Um, you could define uh, commands that get called when, when certain things happen. There's just um, you know, any of the resources and styles. And what you would do is you would take this um, JSON file if you were to create your own you know, custom uh, components <clears throat> and you could uh, host that someplace and then uh, you could include an import statement that would include in that file that has all those components and you could just reuse those things in, in your own project and you know, come up with your own set of components that you can reuse across projects, um, you know, potentially post out and sell uh, to people. Uh, so there's just lots of different things that you can do, but hopefully you know, the mystery of what are, you know, composite components or these responsive components and templates. Um, hopefully you, you understand that. Um, so this is the final video in the series. Um, these 15 videos should prepare you to create your own components and screens using APL. The APL Ninja website is a great place to learn and share your own APL. I look forward to seeing what you create. I hope you found this video and the entire video series helpful. Please let me know with a like or a share. Thank you for watching.